So, in our previous exploration here, we derived this whole definition of a derivative. Okay, today what I want to do with you is go through an example or two of actually finding a derivative this way, and then give you guys a little bit of practice working on um, trying some of these on your own. Okay? If, when you get to AP Calc, or if you go to Calc Honors, or whatever calculus you take after this, um, you'll spend a decent amount of time doing some of these um, in varying levels of complexity. All right? Now, the one nice thing about this is this gives us some good practice dealing with the indeterminate forms. Because as you look at this, just by definition, this is an indeterminate form. As h approaches 0, I have f of x minus f of x on the top, which is 0. And if h is 0, then the bottom is 0 as well. So this is an indeterminate form. We're just going to get some practice working with it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a charger? Yeah. All right, so let's take a quick look at one that we should be able to know. Okay? We said that the derivative gives us the slope of a function at a specific point. Okay? Now, if I have the function f of x equals 4x minus 5, the derivative should equal what? 4. 4, okay? Because the slope of this line is the same no matter what point I'm at. Okay, that's what makes it straight, is that the slope stays the same. It doesn't change. So let's use this example real quickly here, run through the process of finding the derivative, and uh, we can confirm that it equals the slope, m. All right, so in this case, if this is 4x minus 5, how would I find f of x plus h? Okay, we need to add h to the x, right? Yeah. So it's going to be 4 times parentheses x plus h minus 5. Okay? Now, one of the keys here is don't plug in 0 too early. Plugging in 0 will be the last thing you do. All right, so here we have f of x plus h is 4x plus 4h minus 5. And now we can plug this into our formula. Mr. Dixon, yes? What are we trying to do? We are trying to confirm that the, the derivative or the slope at a given point is 4. Uh, we know it is because this is a line. But we're finding actually the derivative f prime of x. Okay, so as we do this, we already found f of x plus h, and that's 4x plus 4h minus 5. We're going to subtract the original function, minus, parentheses, 4x minus 5. Don't forget to distribute the negative here. And then that's going to be over h. We can subtract, we can combine here because we're distributing the negative to both parts. So 4x minus 4x is 0. And 5. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be plus 5? Yeah, it is. Negative 5 here plus 5 is no, 0. I'm, I'm talking about the, the 5 outside. No, because it's minus 5 right here. Yeah, but it's negative on top. So negative something negative is positive. No, that's a minus 4x. That's minus. Minus the function, minus 4x, 4x minus 5. So we're distributing here. So wouldn't it be minus 4x plus 5? Yes. So this minus oh, 5 came from here. This becomes a plus 5, so that's gone. I thought you had All right. And then you can cancel the h. There we go. So we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of 4h over h. And now I can cancel the h's. 
One nice thing about this whole process here is this, okay? Every time you do this, the stuff that doesn't have H's should cancel out. Okay, at least for the ones we're doing right now. We're just going to do some basic ones with polynomials. All right? So we've got that. The limit of a constant now is the constant. So that just equals 4. And we've confirmed that the derivative equals the slope of that line. Okay? And no matter what point on the line you go to, that slope is always going to be 4. All right, so that's kind of easy. Uh, All right, let's try a quadratic then. By the way, notice I'm uh, keeping the variety in the notation here. Since we called this parabola y equals x squared plus 3x minus 5, the derivative we would call dy dx, or that would be the notation that we could use. All right? So here we have our function y equals x squared plus 3x minus 5. If I am doing f of x plus h, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in an x plus h. So it's x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h minus 5. Okay? So now we can just FOIL x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 5. Okay, we're just FOILing and then distributing the 3. And that right there, there's nothing that's alike that we can combine. So we would just leave it like that. Our derivative is going to be on the final. No. So. What, um, but aren't there different derivatives? Like, where you use, like, the limit derivative almost? Or no? No, no. It's like, derivatives is when, like, you get something from something else. Right. You're thinking of a word not related to math. The word derivative, just in a different context, you know, is does mean like a, a byproduct. You know, it's a derivative of this. That's different than what we're talking about here. This is the mathematical term for the rate of change. No, that's okay. So what is this? So. What we're going to find here, we're going to find a function that, if, that will give us the rate of change for various values of x. Okay? What makes this parabola curve is the fact that the slope is changing constantly. Okay? We want to do the derivative in order to find an expression to tell us what the slope would be at various moments. Okay? So let's, let's work our way through this here. We've got our formula here. So we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0 of... We've got the f of x plus h. We just found that x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 5. That's f of x plus h minus the original function x squared plus 3x minus 5. That's all over h. All right, so now we look at simplifying this. And like we had said before, anywhere you anything that does not have an h in it should cancel out. Now make sure you did it right so that actually happens. But notice here an x squared minus x squared, those cancel out. You have a 3x and a minus 3x. Those cancel out. You've got a minus 5 and minus a negative 5, so those cancel out to 0. And notice what's left 
is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared plus 3h all over h. And notice the whole point of this, or the, the reason why this works, remember we said this was an indeterminate form as h approaches 0. Well, all of that stuff cancels out, and notice we have a common factor of h in the numerator. So now we can cancel out the h's. And notice now we have something. It's not a rational function anymore. We can simply plug 0 in for h, and we get our derivative equal to 2x plus 3. Okay? So the derivative of y with respect to x is 2x plus 3. Okay? So if I were looking at this function... And it looked something, I don't know, something like this. Then if I were at the point, let's say the point 1, negative 1. Okay? So it looks like my sketch is a little off. Okay? So it's going to look something like this. Okay? So here's my point 1, negative 1, okay? Well, if I plug in x equals 1 into the derivative, then the slope is going to be 2 times 1 plus 3, okay? That's all right. You're thinking. All right, so... You get 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5. Now, again, if you recall what we were talking about on Friday, what, what has a slope of 5? Well, the curve right at that moment. How do we visualize that? We visualize that using the tangent line. Okay? And, guys, one reason why this is significant is because, let's say this were an object traveling along this path. If it were to break out of whatever's holding it onto that path at that moment, that tangent line is the path it would travel. Okay? I just plugged in one to our original function. That's just a point on the graph. Okay? Just plug in the x coordinate. Plug in the x coordinate and you uh, and you get the slope at that specific point. Okay? Okay, so I want you guys to try a couple of these, all right, and uh, see what you can do, all right?